hardly any tools and tests. And this was mainly to scratch an itch I had. Um, oh, just to give some background to myself, um, I'm Steve Miller. I'm a senior system engineer for Plex Systems. That's not the Plex. That's the you know cool TV app. They actually do um, manufacturing ERPs. So a lot more boring than uh, GUI applications. But we do a lot of containerization and some other interesting things. So that's my day job. But for fun, I like contributing to the Siebel marketplace and uh, really, you know, kicking the tires on a, you know, distributed K3S uh, cluster that I can spin up and down at will, so, or clusters. Um, so a lot of my goals uh, for this talk is going over some of the tooling I developed just to make my life easier, like one of those scratch my own itches and like, hey, maybe other people will find this helpful. So. Uh, um, so I developed a few uh, basic tooling. I try to stick with some uh, around make files and some other like common utilities. So hopefully, uh, you know, a lot of this is, is uh, tried and true technologies. Uh, and what I did is I decided to split out a lot of my, you know, a lot of uh, my templates into a separate um, uh, repo just to provide kind of a templated experience of my make files and some of the other things. So. Um, hopefully provides a better experience if you're starting out with a new project and you want to use some of these instead of, you can copy from my existing uh, projects, but I think this will provide a cleaner experience. Um, just a warning, this is a technically a working Siebel Marketplace app, but it it's, uh, has my personal blog embedded as an app, so I encourage you not to submit this to the Marketplace. I don't think that really <laughs> would make any sense for uh, uh, I, um, a Siebel Marketplace app. No one wants to see my blog on there. I, at least I don't think so. And if you do, you can just always pull down the repo. It's all open source. So. In any case, for today's demo, what I'm going to do is actually do a live update on my Tekton, which is a, uh, or Tekton app, which is a Google-sponsored um, CICD pipeline application. So, um, but around that, we can kind of demo a lot of the testing tools and functionality that I have. So we'll go to my repo. Um, and then, so this is, um, uh, hopefully you see my Visual Studio. Um, this is uh, branched from my personal Siebel Marketplace on my GitHub. And we have my te the Tekton directory. So since it was already built out, it has all those uh, components Kai had mentioned, right? A manifest YAML uh, logo, all those other bits and bits and pieces. Um, what I generally like, since uh, my mat manif or my uh, Applications tend to be a slightly more complex. I actually embed a readme.md, certainly not required, but it's more of if you trip across my app, you have a better idea of what in the world am I doing with this make file and some of these other stranger components that aren't in most uh, uh, marketplace applications. So hopefully it gives you at least a, a you know, starting point for um, what commands to run. And sometimes a good reminder to yourself if you haven't touched something in a while, like what was the make command? Other than looking at the make file. So. Um, so I generally uh, like to include readme's in mine. And then the make file, which really is where a lot of the magic happens for my templating solutions. Uh, a very basic make file, I tend to have variables defining, you know, the version and commands and some other kind of higher level constructs. So they're very easy to change between projects. Um, and we'll see how that helps uh, in a bit. So before my Sivo uh, app, I think it was a, Oh, 14 before. So if you actually look at the marketplace today, that's the app that's currently in the marketplace. So I wanted to update to 0.17. Um, let's see, we're in the right place. So I'm going to write a make clean. So as part of uh, what I'd like to do is automate the entire build of the app.yaml. Um, and I'm kind of assuming that you're using a pure manifest. So um, if you're using scripts, it might work a little differently, but um, I, I assume similar techniques, depending on the application itself could be helpful. So, um, but, and as Kai had mentioned, like you had to pull down some YAML. So what I do is I just automate pulling that down. Now, if you actually look at the Siebel app, I didn't have these particular um, uh, separators in place because on 014, it worked fine, but, on 017, when I decided to update this this morning, I ran my build pipeline to make the app YAML. Um, and as part of the make file, I actually run a quick test to do a dry run just to make sure that the YAML manifests are, are sane, right? That I'm not going to continue any further if it's illegitimate. Man, of course you fail. Or did I say that? Maybe I didn't. I swear it broke. I thought this would be a cool, like, hey, look at test automation. It broke and I detected it. 
demo gods are not being happy with me, apparently. It's invading our entire, okay, there we go. So this is what happened. I decided to update this morning, like, oh, this will be great. And then I go and I get this error. What in the world happened? Um, I'm going to save you as, uh, I'm pretty sure that generated app YAML is, uh, yeah, it's 3,000 lines. So I'll save you the pain and measure of what I went through this morning. But what happened is I'm not, sep there was no automatic separation between these three YAMLs, right? So, okay, cool. I'll fix my make file. So we'll make clean, which will get rid of the app YAML. Make build, which runs all the build steps and the basic test just to make sure the YAM is, YAML is valid. I was figuring this would be the quick part, but okay, there we go. So we have a clean YAML, right? Like structurally it is sound. There are no major errors, no you know, typos or anything like that. So we know at least we're starting from a relatively clean place. Um, so now we have all 17 in YAML files. Uh, and just to show the, uh, yeah, actually you can see the code up there, just a bunch of curl commands and, you know, the kube control fly dry runs. So fairly basic Kubernetes stuff, but just, you know, embedded in a make file to just kind of make life easier. Um, all right. So once I have that, Ed Kai mentioned, it's nice to actually run the test, right? That you're not deploying a, uh, you know, you're not going to submit a PR before you've actually tested that this thing works, right? So Tecton being fairly complicated, um, testing's a bit interesting, so it's nice to actually embed that. And what I do is most of the test is buried. Uh, there's a test uh, uh, target that will actually build out a cluster and do a clean. So I'm gonna to try to do a clean, brand new cluster and test. We'll see how that works. Um, if that doesn't work, we'll, uh, we'll go from there. So, so make test. A minute. I just realized I had a partial test, so this would not work. Or I had a partial cluster already built out. And I did, and it's stuck in installing. So I'm going to ignore that. I'm going to go to my backup. Uh, so just to point out, like in this make file, you notice these are question equals. That means all these environment variables can, can be quickly overridden by the environment, right? So that way I can quickly customize how this make file is without editing it. So based on that, I've already pre-built a cluster in case this happened. So we'll see if this works. Yeah, it's like, right. So I'm gonna basically override the cluster in the Tecton back, which I've already created and I have a kube uh, config in my local uh, repo. Um, now, I've already deployed Tecton, so that's why you see, like, most of these are unchanged, a few reconfigurations, but it's basically applying the app YAML. It's part of my, um, part of my structure. Uh, let me go down to the test so we can follow along. So, yep, here I'm going, I'm applying the app YAML, and what I'm going to do is create, these are custom resources that are used by Tecton itself. So, I'm basically creating a task and a task run to run a very basic hello world pipeline. And then here I'm getting that custom resource, this task run, I'll put it at the JSON, pull in the JSON content and seeing if it succeeded or not. So very basic test and very dependent on your application. Um, I'm gonna to go to that repo, the, uh, my templated repo, which is a, basic, a more basic test because it's an Nginx uh, web server, right? That's being pulled up. So for that test, um, what I'm doing is I'm just doing a quick job. I'm applying a job. Um, and in that job, it's simply a busy box container and it's running a wget against the service. Super basic, right? Just make sure the container comes up and it works. So even if that's all you do with your test, I think it's a legitimate, right? At least the YAML came up and there's something listening on the port that I expect. So, um, it tends to get a little challenging uh, depending on how sophisticated you want to make tests, but I, I try to keep it at least as a bare bones, like does it work or not? Uh, and as we saw this test, it succeeded. Uh, so yay, and now I'm ready to prepare, actually I'm ready, uh, this branch is already created, so I'll probably submit the PR to this uh, later this afternoon or evening, at least in the US times, it's on uh, noon right now, so. Uh, 
Future considerations, I've considered putting this more in a bill pipeline and possibly dockerizing this entire process so it's not dependent on my local environment. Um, I'd like to figure out a way to test, um, none of my particular marketplace apps use uh, marketplace variables, but if they do, I'd like to have a better story about testing those if I do have a variable that needs to be um, included in testing various uh, failure scenarios. Um, and more sophisticated testing suites, I understand, like, especially if you have a web app, maybe you want to run something like Selenium or something that's a more sophisticated go through, log in, make sure it works uh, versus just, you know, make sure the service is up and running. Um, and depending on your specific app uh, really depends on how um, sophisticated you want to make such tasks. But um, certainly open to other ideas, better ways of doing this, um, build pipelines to use. But uh, so far, it's, uh, it's working for me. And uh, yeah, I'd certainly encourage, especially any advice uh, of places to go. So uh, 